Okay. everybody left welcome to our live interview this is going to be a very special interview i'm interviewing somebody that i know personally tonight who's been dealing with something all her life that a lot of you people have probably never even heard of and we're going to talk about how she has successfully overcome um these things that we're going to talk about tonight and as you can see she has a crown on she has a crown Wear on. Crown, queen. Wear, your crown. <laughs> Wear that crown, honey. But so everybody come on in, hit that like button, hit the share button. Make sure you share the live out to all your family and friends, especially if you are related to me and related to Carnesia. <laughs> we are cousins by long distance, but we are cousins. Yeah, we are cousins. Real cousins. Now, <laughs> so make sure you all show support by liking the video, sharing the video, and subscribe to the channel if you like our content. No pressure. Yes. No pressure. Comedy, please introduce yourself. Hey, hey, hey. Y'all know who it is. The one and only Karma Diva in the house. Woo -woo. I know I have been missing for a while. I was dealing with some, uh, I don't know. It might have been the Rona. It could have just been bronchitis. Hell, I don't know. I'm gonna give it to Tanya. That's for sure. I'll I'll make sure. I'll I'm gonna mail it to you. I'm gonna mail I'll it to you. <laughs> but I'm so excited to be here tonight to interview Carnesia. Um, I think the video that I saw about her was so wonderful and positive that you know you have to give people their praise, and you know you don't want to. I mean, she's doing everyday things, but there's a lot of people who would let a disability stop them and baby girl we're so proud that you are journeying on doing what you have to do and um i'm just i'm really happy to sit here and talk to you tonight and i think it's going to be a great thank interview. You. <laughs> thank you for introducing yourself and my dear cousin go ahead and introduce yourself let the people know who you are and where you're from and why you got that crown on your head my name is carnisha chantel some people know me as K Chantel. Um, I am Miss Witcher Alabama 2020 recently, Yay. and uh, we're headed to nationals this year. Awesome, awesome. Yay. I love the crown, <laughs> it's beautiful, it's beautiful. And again, everybody who's just coming into the live, if you saw the title of the video, um, we're interviewing Carnesia Chantel, who was born with spinal bifida. And she is actually now Miss Wheelchair Alabama. She was just crowned recently, a little while ago, crowned Miss Wheelchair Alabama. And she's on the road to trying to become Miss Wheelchair USA for America. <laughs> so I am so proud of her. I am so extremely proud of her. Like Carmel Diva said, there's a lot of people who are born with a lot of disabilities and some of them don't don't reach as far as they possibly pop possibly probably couldn't reach. They, they, they use it as a crutch to not. They use it as a crutch. Mm -hmm. They use it as a crutch or a stopping point to not uh, ascend to higher heights. Right. And you know, I feel like anybody who can take their disability and turn it into a possibility, you you already won. 
because your spirit is allowing you to go further than maybe your body can. Exactly. Exactly. Now, Carnesia, let the people know who's watching. Um, and you do have a lot of supporters in the chat. I see family rolling in already. Um, let them know exactly what spina bifida is. Spina bifida is a congenital birth defect where um, there's a hole in the spinal column and the spinal cord is not completely closed at birth. And so mine is in the lower region of my spinal cord. Okay. So once they close that up, it results in, in my paraplegia. Okay. Now and you were watching um, where they can go in. Um, it's risky, but they can go in and repair that while the while the mom is still pregnant. Have you seen that or heard about that? Yeah, that procedure um, is a most recent procedure. It wasn't available at the time when when I was born. But yes, that that is the most recent procedure that I have seen. Okay. Now, are they okay. having a lot of success with that, or um, or um, the kid? everybody's different? Now, spina bifida is a they call it a snowflake condition because no one case is like the other. So somebody else's success rate could be different from the next person's. Okay. Right. Okay. And I, I, I have read where there are four types of spina bifida. Which one do you have? Or are there more than four types? Because that's just what I read. I have myelomeningocele spina bifida. Okay. Okay, now is that on the lower end? Is that on the higher end, like between worse and you know what I mean? Like, um, there's it's hard to say what's the low and high end, but mine specifically, the fluid was around the sac of my spinal cord, mm -hmm. and some people it's wrapped around, um, I can't even explain it. Sometimes it's wrapped around the spinal cord, and sometimes it travels up to the brain. Mine didn't come up to my brain. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, and, and when you were, you were, so you were literally born with that or like w when you were, um, when your mom was pregnant, my cousin, I hope she's watching. Uh, when your mom was pregnant, did she know then or did the doctors know then or was it after you were born that they just saw she something like, that don't look right? She did not. She didn't know. Um, she was never informed and I don't even think the doctors knew until I was born. Okay. But I also have two I have two underlying conditions as well. I was also born with gastroschisis. So my mom was hit with a double surprise at birth, which was I had an opening on the back and the front. I uh my intestines were exposed as well as my spinal cord. Oh wow. Now what did they use to uh cover that up? Did they use skin from something else or they just kept you covered until the skin finally I don't have all the details on how they closed me up. Uh my mom my mom knows most of that, but as far as I know, they opened me up and put it back inside and then closed it back up. <laughs> okay. Oh wow. So you probably had some pretty extensive surgeries throughout many surgeries throughout my lifetime mm -hmm. and I'm still not done having surgeries. <laughs> oh, really? You still, you still got more surgeries to come. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now is, are those like, um, to try to help the spinal bifida? Like I know you're like paralyzed from, is it the waist? Right. Yeah. At the waist? And, um, no, no surgeries. It, I wouldn't say it necessarily helps spina bifida. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, spina bifida is, is, is not curable. Okay. Um, but it's kind of to correct some things that might have been misplaced from birth, even still are okay. still not where they're supposed to be. Okay. All right. Well, I definitely want to wish you good luck with any surgeries that you have upcoming. Yeah. I wish the most success for you. Um, like, you know, this... I before okay I never heard of this before, <laughs> but then you know um, a while back when we were um, getting the family the our first mega family reunion together that was how I met you and I met a whole bunch of different family members across the United States and I when I first um, fr we became friends on Facebook and I saw your posts I saw your videos I saw your accomplishments and I'm like well dang this lady 
this cutting mine is cutting mine she's amazing and that's why i had to have you on our first segment of our she's so amazing show because i just i'm just so proud of everything that you have done and everything that you have accomplished now i know that you're miss alabama right now mm -hmm. um you won miss wheelchair wheelchair alabama let me correct that miss wheelchair alabama 2020 and you have done yeah. a lot of things over your life that you know are just my surprise a lot of people i want to know like how has spinal bifida um impacted you since birth to now because i know that you have this disease or this you know spinal disease but you accomplished so much so how has it impacted you positively and negatively since birth ah that's a good question um positively it makes me look at life different as far as i don't see anything wrong with the way that i am to me it just gave me an extra push i guess but it also i can't i don't know if i can speak to the negative as much because this is the only life that i that i've known to live um, uh, the only thing i can say is is the way that the world looks at us and that mm -hmm. that's, that's part of the negative is the way that they see us and we're just people they look at y'all like, oh, poor you, and you need to be fixed. I'm never looking for anyone's sympathy yeah. right. in my life. Right. And that's 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 something really important uh, when you're born with um, something like that where you're paralyzed or, you know, can't walk or anything like that. A lot of times what helps you get by is not wanting sympathy from other people yeah. and trying your best to achieve personal goals like all the things that you have done successfully um did do you have like a uh how do they like do you have goals that you set out intentionally like one day i'm going to become miss Wilson? do you have goals like that or is it just like people People, you know, approach you with different ideas and be like, I think you should go out. I mean, how did you become Miss Wheelchair Alabama? <laughs> I actually don't have a goal when I said. Uh, things just kind of happen to me. Mm -hmm. Or I, I know what I want to do in life. And I, I feel like I know what my purpose is. And I just work to fulfill that. And in turn, things and different opportunities just kind of come to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I was approached by a few a few people who said that I should do this competition. And for the last two years, I just didn't want to do it. I was running from it. I was like, I don't think that's me. I don't I don't see myself as a miss anybody or I don't know how that would work for me. I've never done nothing like that. Mm -hmm. But I did it and I was good at it. And I, it, was, it was fulfilling for me. It was, and I didn't know that I would feel like that about this type of competition. Oh, wow. It's more <laughs> around. Go ahead, come on. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. You want, go ahead, Carnish, and then Karma Diva's got to ask you a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it's centered around advocacy, and that's what I already do. So, therefore, uh, it was the right lane for me, and I just didn't even know that. Okay. All right. Awesome. You got a question, Karma Diva? No, she answered it. Oh, oh. okay. <laughs> okay. So you don't have like a vision board, like, like, I don't know why, but you know, sometimes people, when they, if it, when they in a position where a lot of people would just, just expect for them to not be able to do certain things like regular, you know, regular day people's, mm -hmm. um, that sometimes you know people might have a vision board or anything like like the modeling. How did you get into modeling? Because a lot of people don't know that you're a model as well. Yeah. I, uh, I never I never really been into the into the vision boards. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I, when we did the competition in Huntsville, this competition in Huntsville, we did have a a, a um, vision board activity, mm -hmm. and. It was my first time ever doing a vision board. And I was like, I can see how people would like this. But I, I'm just kind of a like fly by the seat of my pants type of person. And I just yeah. go whatever's going on. But uh, what was your original question? Oh, 
what how how did you get into modeling? Like was My, that something you wanted to get into? Yeah, I wanted to get into it and I just I started taking some pictures to see, you know, if this is something that I wanted to get into. Mm -hmm. I started working with a couple of people taking pictures and I had a friend of mine that approached me and was like, hey, I'm doing a fashion show and he had a clothing line. He's like, I want you to be a part of it. I was like, yeah, this is something I want to do. I'll do it. And I was super nervous, but it turned out very well. And I just kept doing them after that and kept taking pictures and I got published and I keep getting published and getting shows and it's it's just been an amazing experience and I hope to continue because this is part of my work in advocacy is showing that we need representation in the beauty and entertainment industries. Right. True. Right. Very true. Very true. Very true. You got a question, Carmel Diva, before I roll roll out another one? Go for it. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, you had just mentioned something that I wanted to talk about and that was you representing um, you know, people who have disabilities and things like that. Like, I know that um, you are a disability advocate. So what are some of the things that you um, do, you know, is it just find a bifida that you're advocating about or all type or is there a category? I will say it's not just find a bifida for me. Mm -hmm. It's really about all disabilities, but um I will say when we see the little representation we do have, most of the time congenital disabilities aren't represented. Mm -hmm. It's usually people who have acquired a disability over time. Right. And yeah. yeah, or something like that. And those are my people too. We're all one, but I need to show that congenital disabilities, we need that representation as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm glad. I'm glad that you're an advocate for disabilities because you're right. It's 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 not a lot, and a lot of the times we don't see a lot of people with disabilities, you know, in the media like that, like mm -hmm. like TV shows, um, movies, uh, modeling, exactly. um, commercials, you know. And mm -hmm. I like the fact that the guy who approached you, you know, felt the, you know, need to make sure you were a part of that project because you are very beautiful. And I know there are other very beautiful and handsome men and women who, you know, has a disability. And I think that you guys should be more in commercials and more into, it's like every time you see something about a disabled person on TV, it's just like a fundraiser or it's just like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, Dream is never like a regular everyday person. They always want to show somebody that is extremely uh, disabled. They don't show the people who are disabled but are still living right. everyday lives. And they're still, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. They always want to go to the other end of the spectrum. Exactly. Because, you know, like I, I get it. You know, Tanya, that I just started I mean, I advocate for disabilities, too, um, and I get mad because my disabilities aren't visible. Mm -hmm. And, you right. know, I pull into a handicapped spot, and then, of course, you know, I got people, why she in that handicapped spot? And this baby, all handicaps are not seen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, I with my disability, I have good days. And then I got days where I'm using a cane and I want a I want a wheelchair. But <laughs> you know, it, it you know, we do need to advocate more for disabilities because we are um underrepresented in society as a whole, um, and especially in the media. So yeah. that is one of the reasons why I was so happy to have you on tonight and to talk to you because I am I'm absolutely over the moon about all of the things that you're doing, especially modeling. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> yes. And by the way, everybody, I am, and I'm going to let you say what you want to say. I'm, I'm putting the link in the chat because Miss Carnesia Chantel, you see the crown on her head, you see the sash on her shoulders. She has just recently, you know, got chosen to be Miss Wheelchair Alabama 2020. She is going to be running for Miss Wheelchair United States or USA. Um, and she is, um, 
she gave me a link because she's trying to raise funds to help assist her along the way. So I'm going to be dropping the link. I already dropped the link in there a few times. So I dropped the link and you can click on the link and you can donate from anywhere up. Can they donate like any size? Like what's the, is there any amount? Any amount. Um, we're not asking for a certain amount and we are accepting all amounts. Okay. okay. There, is a, there is a goal listed on the link of what we're trying to reach. Okay. Okay. I'm going to make sure I donate tonight too. Um, <clears throat> after we, well, I can't do it now, but I'm going to donate tonight win. after the show. <laughs> now, when you win, because see, I'm speaking it into existence. Yes. When you win, um, what do you win? What do you, what, what do you win? Well, you win the title of Miss Wheelchair America and you continue the work of advocacy of spreading your platform. And my platform will not be limited to just Alabama. It will broaden to the world. Right. So it will strengthen what I'm trying to do in my work for the community. So you don't win like a cash pro. I know like uh, like Miss America and all of that. They Because like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. But um, I know they get scholarships and stuff like that yeah, when they do. <laughs> oh, I, I know she's awesome, and I got another question, Carnesha. Um, I had read somewhere where um you had described your wheelchair as both your best friend and your worst enemy. Can you explain that to us? Yeah, that was a campaign I had maybe about three years so years ago. Uh -huh. and, um, it it. It kind of is self-explanatory to me. Mm -hmm. This is my means, my way of getting around. It, it's hooked to me. Essentially, it is a part of me. If you touch my chair, I feel like you're touching me. Right. But at the same time, um, going out into the world, dealing with corporate, because at the time I was working in corporate America, and it just seemed like they saw the chair before they saw me. Mm -hmm. So at times, it made me be like, I don't like this at all but it's still me this is still me and this is what you're gonna get you know, it's my best friend sometimes it is my worst enemy because the life is hard i just try to make it look easy. okay all right okay let them know that it's a wheelchair it's not you you are more than what that is and that's i, I get what you're saying baby i get it i get it <laughs> And I have to ask you, I have to ask you, um, is there any advice that you would give to parents who have been newly diagnosed um, by their doctor saying there's a possibility or you are going to be having a child born with um, spina bifida? Is there any advice you want to give out there? Because I know it has to be scary. I know it has to be scary to find, I mean, any birth defect, you know, when you're um, carrying a baby and then they probably wonder, is it something I've done? Is it something in our, you know, family lineage? Is it something hereditary? You know? So I if you would, have any advice, um, yeah. Um, don't look at it as, as uh, something bad. Or if you feel sorry for your child, what do you think your child is going to do? Mm. So I would say find ways to cope and deal with the situation so that your child does not suffer in the process. Uh, my parents never made me feel like I was a burden or anything like that. So uh. it never of our life the way that we can, you know. Don't try to put too many limitations on us or smother us as well. Thankfully, my parents didn't smother me. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that advice. Um, do you know, or I don't know if you do know, or if your parents ever talked to you about it, but was there like a doctor's expectation for you as far as? Um, expectations for life, like how long they expected you to, you know, live, or were there anything like that? Because I know you ain't no little kid right now, so you done lived a long life already. <laughs> I honestly don't think that I don't know if there was actually expectation. I don't think they, I think they told my mom to prepare for whatever could happen because I did cold twice when I was born. Oh wow! So um, I don't 
think they expect me to live long just based on how they put me back together. I don't think they expected me to even be this much as adulthood because I'm still getting things corrected that I feel like should have been placed like that in the first place. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, Let's say, but, uh, <laughs> that's but that's how I believe in that situation. Okay. And you were saying something, Carmen Diva. I just said, you know, they, you know, they wasn't thinking that she was gonna probably live long. She coded twice at birth, and she was born with these uh, defects. But God, but God, God. but God has the final word. And look at her. She's still here. She's doing amazing things. Now, yeah. what I did want to ask about is I saw you driving. I saw you rolling. So <laughs> <laughs> how, was, how was taking the driver's test and, um, you know, how is your car modified to uh, help you drive? Um, question before you answer, I got a part B of that. Was the car donated? Did you have to make those accommodations yourself out of your own pocket? Or is there like resources that people with disabilities can apply for? Go ahead. <laughs> you do have to buy a car yourself. Uh, they're not going to buy a car for you, but there are resources to help you to obtain the hand controls and the driving lessons and all of that that you need to assist you in driving. Okay. And there, there are plenty of resources out there. Mine was vocational rehab. And I had to go through 12 hours of driving classes to learn how to use the hand controls before I was able to take the driving test. And I, was, I didn't end up getting my license until I was 19 due to all of the different stuff that I had to do. But that's all right. Okay. Well, that's all right. Congratulations. Some people in their thirties and forties and can't even drive, yeah. and they don't have no disabilities. So, <laughs> I think I think that's amazing achievement because you ain't even letting it stop you. You got a wheelchair. You can use that. You can get out there on the street, and you can get on the bus, and you can do all that with a wheelchair. But you was like, uh, uh, <laughs> I won't be a wheel. I got another question, and it may sound stupid, but I, I, when you are getting into your vehicle, how are you able to pull your wheelchair and shut the door? How are you able I to crawl do that? the chair and shut the door. You do what, huh? I crawl across the chair and pull the door shut. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> Ain't no I seen you on the video, and I was like, now how does she? Sh I mean, my mind always go to weird places, and I was just kind of like, now how does she shut the door, though? Because she did it all with no help. When I, when I first saw that video, I was like, Okay, I, I've never seen that done before. And sometimes it, it might seem like stupid questions because she's born with this, she's dealt with it. We're like, you know, how, 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 but. Again, again, it's amazing. It's amazing that you continue, you know, doing whatever you wanted to do and reaching certain goals. And I want you to tell us about some of your achievements because I only know of a few things. I know about you becoming Miss uh, Wheelchair Alabama 2020, which is awesome. I know your model and basketball. Let's talk about basketball and then you doing nails because she has a nail a nail facebook page let me let me let me see here it's called chantel nails. and her, she does amazing i wish i was down there in the alabama i would you do an amazing amazing job on nails the rhinestones the bling the you you do an amazing job. So I want you to talk about a little bit about basketball first, how you got into basketball, and then, you know, over to the nails. I started playing basketball when I was in high school. Uh, I was on this – I joined this team through Memphis, and we started traveling, playing junior basketball. Uh, when I – I didn't play basketball anymore while I was in college and things like that until I moved to Birmingham and I knew that there was a team here. So I went to check them out. I didn't end up joining until the year after I moved here. I just, I, it's, the game of basketball has always been fun to me. I love it. I like to watch it. I like to play it. 
would like to critique it. What's your position? I that we don't really have set positions, honestly. And see, that probably was a dumb question, but I just had to ask because <laughs> I don't know. It's just you know, in standing basketball, but with us, you kind of just help out where you can and know okay. your strengths and your weaknesses. And technically, I'm considered a little, so I'm better at defense. Um, <laughs> but I'm not currently playing right now okay. due to some health issues I'm having. Uh, but hopefully, I can get back out there sooner than later. Awesome. Now, um, they ain't get a lost my thought. <laughs> I had a question I was gonna ask. Um, okay, move on. I'll think about it later. Okay, yeah, we'll come back to it later and then talk about the nails. Was that always something you wanted to do, like get into nails, or did you start like doing your own nails or doing friends? Or and I, your clientele has to be pretty high because I looked at your nail work and I and I'm a I'm not a artist but I'm a cake artist mm. and all the details and the different designs and everything I, I you do beautiful work so I just want you to let us know how you got into that nails was a hobby I, I did start doing my own and I used to do some of my cousins coming up and then when I went to college I kind of used it as a little Side hustle, nothing too major, but mm. uh, I didn't never take it serious. My people always used to ask me, Why don't you do nails? Why are you even in school? I was like, I don't want to do nails. <laughs> and once I stopped going to school and I figured out that I didn't like corporate America, I was like, I need to make something work for me. Mm -hmm. So I started to take nails a little more serious. I went to school, I got certified. And here I am, and business is good. Yes, and again, if y'all want to check her work out, if y'all are from Alabama, um, <laughs> do you have, like, I know I have your uh, page up here right now. It's Chantel's Nails, S-H-A-N-T-E-L-Z, Nails, N-A-I-L-Z. Is there, um, do you have, like, an Instagram the same Instagram, the same name is on Instagram as well. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So y'all make sure y'all check her out if y'all down there, you know, where she's from. And uh, what city are you actually in? I'm in Birmingham, Alabama. Birmingham. Birmingham. Okay. So if you're in Birmingham, Alabama, you want somebody to hook your nails up them cuticles. <laughs> yeah, get your nails did. Please hit her up. And she's also on um, Instagram as well. As well. Now, I remember my question. Okay. <laughs> um, what I wanted you know to know. Old. Um, right, girl. Um, but what I wanted to wait a minute, speak for yourself. I ain't that old. <laughs> I, I. <laughs> um, no, what I wanted to know about uh basketball, um, you were saying you play for uh, a specific team. Now, who is it uh, sponsored through? Like the Y is this uh, who's it sponsored through so that other people can maybe go out there and fit, uh, find that uh. League too. Mm -hmm. um, the team that I played for was the Lake Shore Foundation here in Birmingham, Alabama. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lake Shore or Laker Shore? Lake Shore. Lake Shore. Okay. Lake Shore. It's not necessarily a foundation, but um, just somebody that sponsors you guys. Lake Shore Foundation are the sponsors and the owners of the team. Oh, okay. It's a whole facility. It's a whole facility. Uh, for people with disabilities, and they have their own sports sports teams, and it's affiliated with the U.S. Paralympics. Okay, oh, all right, okay. awesome, cool, 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 cool. Now, uh, what other achievements have you accomplished, or what other things have you accomplished? You got your hands in a lot of different pots. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you know, feel free to toot your own horn. <laughs> That's hard for me to do. That's really hard for me to do. Uh, but, um, oh, you're going to learn to do that as you get older because if you don't, ain't nobody else going to do it for you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I am a writer. I uh, I write for a magazine here in Birmingham called I Push Magazine. Wow. Um, we have several successful, 
successful issues. And in every issue, you can find an article written by me. Okay. Um, I do some freelance writing as well. If anybody wants to bring me on as a writer, I can do that. Uh, I really enjoy it. It was a talent I hated in school, but as I got older, I realized I can do it. And I work well under pressure because I always push it to the last minute. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, besides that, the modeling, I have an MBA in marketing, so I'm good with promoting things and, and managing my business and things like that. It really helps me managing my business and my personal brand as well. Okay. All right. And That's do you feel like a dream job? Like out of all the things that you're involved in, are one of them like your dream jobs or is there something else that you aspire to do or be? I would say my dream job was, and I say was because the industry is changing. But it's still a thing. My my dream job is to be a radio personality and a host. Um, <clears throat> but the way the media is changing, everything is so accessible is that you can really do it on your own. Right. And I would like to start a podcast eventually. I'm still working out the ideas around that. I have merged together the idea of wanting to be a host and working entertainment with my nail business. And I started a series called Claw Talk, which... Um, I filmed the first episode. It went really well. People really liked the idea. And it's a nail-based interview where okay. I interview people right now from around the city who I feel like their stories need to be told. And we sit here, I do your nails, and we chat about what you got going on. Film it, put it online. Oh, wow. Well, you know, that would be a good idea for you as far as that. Doing it like a sister circle. So you have like a group chat, but you're doing somebody's nails at the same time. That That is eventually what I'm going to, I mean, well, not eventually. I'm going to do that with some of my guests because some of my guests are not, their business or their ventures are not just one person. Right, so right. I'm doing this person nails. I may have their husband or their wife with them too, explaining what they do as well or their okay. business partner and their friends and all of that. So that is the direction I plan to take claw talk in i'm very excited to keep that moving um we'll be without all this that's going on in the world we were supposed to film next right. week but we may have to push that back but it's, it's definitely going to continue and why are you talking about the podcast now i have a supervisor who does podcasts and she i was talking to her about getting involved in that but i do youtube and she was talking about you know i like the podcast because people can't see us and, da -da -da -da, and i'm shy and woo -woo -woo -woo. i told her i said you might as well get your youtube channel so don't sleep on youtube because it's one thing telling me to do youtube but i'm not technical it's very hard for me to I'm so I'm such an in the world type of person. Um, the technol the technology stuff confuses me. The oh, uploading, the editing, it's just call me. call me. I tell everybody, girl, I got so many people started on YouTube, like for real, friends, coworkers, strangers. I'm gonna get you. A, you gonna get your YouTube channel? I'm like, I got one. I just don't know how to use it. It's easier than you. It's easier than you can imagine, and. When I tell you, I think that you will have a very successful YouTube channel if you were to get started. And just the things, the, just simple things that um, we do that are maybe a little bit more difficult for you, like videos about, like Carmel Diva asked you earlier, how do you get in your car? How do you, you know, simple things like that, or how do you cook? Or, you know, okay, I just throw it on my Instagram, though, and keep it going. Well, see, the thing about it with YouTube, though, I don't know if you're getting paid over there on that uh, Instagram. No, I'm still trying to build my following. I'm almost there, but I'm not quite there yet. Well, ain't nothing wrong with having more than one hustle. Ask her to a million of them. Hey, hey, I ain't gonna lie. I'm a, I'm a cake artist. I'm a YouTuber. I got like three, four, eleven other jobs. And a part-time pilot too. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. Shoot, I might pick up the president one day. I'm like, <laughs> oh, drop him off in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> but if you ever have any, <laughs> if you ever have any questions about it, feel free to let me know. Because what some people also do. 
Well, some people also do the things they record on um, IG. Like, remember when I was telling you about the StreamYard, the platform that we're on right now? Yeah. You can stream up to like four or five different things. Like right now we're streaming on YouTube and we're streaming on Facebook. You can stream mm -hmm. on IG, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube at the same time. At the okay. Same time. You don't have to go here and cut and copy, download. You can, Same time. And everybody can watch you at the same time. So you can, you know, that's that, that multimedia platform is kind of fairly new. But a lot of people do use it, especially to do interviews or panels like this. So it's just the idea. If you got any questions, let me know. <laughs> but, do you got any more questions, Carmadiva? Before we get yeah, into it, I was, I was going to ask her now. What do you What do you do for fun? What do you What do you like to go out and do? And does it limit? I mean, by you being in a wheelchair, do, do you have limitations on some of the things? that you can do? I like to say that I don't have limitations. Mm -hmm. um, I like to do all kinds of things. I'm very outgoing. I like to go to the movies. I like to, I, I'm really open to anything. Mm. I wanna do things that I haven't done before. That's, that's what I'm trying to do more in this season of my life is one thing that I haven't done before. I want to try the indoor skydiving. I want to do <laughs> scared. <laughs> like arcade and like that. Like I, that I am scared of heights. I am scared of heights. But when you were talking about you want to get out and do more things that you like to do, can I ask are you dating? I just want to know, do you got a man friend? Just yeah, man. some of the guys out there be like, oh she cute. Oh shit! <laughs> told me. You said. <laughs> you said what? <laughs> that they haven't told me that. Oh. <laughs> but no. Uh, we were here right spot. Trust me, they all oh, honey. Mm -hmm. They out here. They waiting on you. Yeah, they, they sure. Under that clown. <laughs> oh, oh lord! Oh lord! Oh lord! I said under the crown. I'm being good tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you a mess. You a mess. And people watching, thank you for everybody tuning in. We're not about to wrap up, so don't think we're about to wrap up. I just want to take a second to thank everybody that's watching us on YouTube and on Facebook. And again, I did put a link in the chat. Um, donations. Carnesia is accepting donations for her role to Miss Wheelchair America. As you can see, the crown that she come, has on, just for those who might have just recently came in, she was um, she was given the title of Miss Wheelchair Alabama 2020. So that's why she's wearing that crown, for those of y'all who might just have came into the live. And mm -hmm. I want her to talk a little bit about what it takes or what avenues are next for you to, you know, try to make it to become Miss Wheelchair America. Right now, um, right now is 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 gathering and raising the funds for for nationals. Um, right, with everything being so uncertain right now, it's hard to say what's next. Yeah, because there's a lot that I want to do that's now on pause. And there's right. a lot that I had in the works that's now on pause, so I don't want to speak to anything yet. But there will be events and there will be times where you can see me out, but I just don't know what that'll be just yet. Okay. All right. Now, do you guys, Um, I don't know, I have to be honest, I don't know a whole lot about pageants. I don't know a whole lot about pageants. So do you guys have to tour a lot or or i mean with miss alabama i'm sure you're mainly in state you know promoting and all that kind of stuff but when it comes to miss usa do you guys have to travel a lot do tours and all kind of like what all is involved in something like that um i will go to where anybody that wants to talk to me or um we, we do have to make appearances okay so so it is either somebody contacts me or I contact them and we just get the ball rolling that way. Okay. So we, we have to make appearances and explain our platform and, and make strides into 
using our platform and, and explaining what we want to do and how we're going to go about it and things like that. It's just that now just can't do those things publicly. Yeah, right now. Corona. Yeah. Yeah. With the virus going around. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's a uh uh don't you start coughing karma diva <laughs> but yeah it's a mess right now a lot of people is canceling trips and canceling events and concerts basketball everything right now so I, get it. I get it and but hopefully we won't be shut down for long hopefully i know they are working at record speeds trying to find the proper treatment, the cure, the antidote for what's going around. So a lot more people are not, you know, affected as they are. But so hopefully you guys will be able to start doing your events and doing your promotions and traveling and doing live interviews in person and all that really, really soon. So that's what I'm hoping for. But tell us, tell us why, why do you deserve to be Miss Wheelchair USA. I know why you do, but tell the people. <laughs> I believe that uh, I am the representation that I would like to see in our community. And I make strides every day to ensure that that happens. And I, don't know, I just really feel like I'm the person for the job, I guess. <laughs> I, I really want I'm really passionate about what I do and what I speak on though. If I if I'm speaking on it, I've done my research, I have studied, I am pretty sure about what I'm talking about. So yeah. You know, anything that's half done and mm -hmm. I'm genuine in what I say. Right. I can I can tell you're passionate. I know you're passionate. Mm -hmm. I mean I follow you on you know the instagram the facebook and everything and you know we are cousins so i know how passionate you are and when i said before that i know why you should receive that crown for miss wheelchair usa because i just see your accomplishments like all the time i actually get to you know see that on social media you know the people who follow you we get to see that everything that you're involved in from playing basketball from being a model from being miss uh wheelchair alabama i mean th there's so many things again that you have accomplished that people without any disabilities can accomplish or you know wouldn't know how to tackle that you know that goal so i really do think that you know You'll get it. I, I'm here to support you all the way. Um, you. you have a lot of support with family, a lot of support with friends and people right. being coming into the chat and sharing the video and everything. So you have a lot of people supporting you. So again, I want to say also that there's a link in the chat and I'm going just going to bring up the screen so they can uh, know that they're getting to the right link when they go to the screen. So let me just show or move us all to the side. And I'm going to share this screen over here. And let me know if it's not big enough. Okay, I think it's pretty big enough. I think it's pretty big. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, the link that um, I keep dropping in the chat is going to take you to this link right here. If it takes you anywhere else, then you got the wrong link. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> But this is the link that it takes you to. Go ahead. Can y'all still see me? Yeah, we see you. Um, yeah. I hit something and I can't see nobody. <laughs> oh, well, just just go out and come back in. I'm trying. Okay. But this is the link. Um, this is the page for Carnesia, and this is to help her on her journey for Miss uh, Wheelchair USA, Miss Wheelchair uh, America. <laughs> so all you have to do is click the link in the chat. It will take you to this donation page. It says support K Chantel, which is short for Carnesia Chantel to the MWA Nationals. Um, again, it says on here, she's Miss Wheelchair Alabama 2020. Um, you can see there's different links on here from $25, $50, $100, $250, or other. So whether you want to donate a dollar or more, and you can do it one time. There's a one-time thing right here. Or you can do it monthly. 
So it's up to you. But I know that she appreciates any kind of donation um, to help her along the road to Miss Wheelchair America. So that is the link. And I'm going to close it right now. And there's also a text to give feature as well. Okay, yeah, that's right. Let me go to that. Uh, let's see. Let me let me find it. Let me find it. Okay, and there's also a link where you can actually text a donation. So I'm going to put that in the chat right now. And it is M K A M. I'm sorry, M. Okay, let me just copy it and paste. <laughs> I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> I do not want you know I hey I'm dyslexic. So I'm typing it in the chat right now. So you can click that link to uh donate or you can um do a text. Yes. Okay, so I just put the text in there. It says text to M W A K S P that's Mother Walter Apple Kevin Sam Peter to four four is it that no four four three two one? Yeah, four four three two one to text donations. So you can either click the link, the first link that I showed you guys, the first screen, or you can text it. Right. And again, any donations is appreciated. Is appreciated. Anything else you want to uh, roll out with Carmel Diva before we wrap up our interview? Um, I think I'm good. <laughs> you good in the hood on the hood I'm table? Good in the hood. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any last minute things you want to uh, say as far as your uh, promoting your brand or anything before we wrap up, Carney? Um, no, uh, I guess continue to support and give if you can. Anything is greatly appreciated. And uh, be on the lookout for new episodes of Cloud Talk coming soon. Awesome. And yeah. I, that's what I meant to ask you earlier. Where can we find the Cloud Talk? Like, I posted it on my Facebook. It's on uh, Facebook? It is on Facebook. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, again, y'all know I'm all about social media. You got to start you an individual one for that, too. Twitter, Instagram, Face. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> you want to, for real, you want to, like, like that's yeah. going to be a brand. And yeah. you're, you're going you're gonna to need to get that copyrighted, too. Mm-hmm. For real. Claw Talk, I, I ain't never heard nothing like that before. Right. And it's very interesting. It's very different. Um. Ooh. It's a lot of nail techs out here who I ain't never heard of anything like that that they wanted to do or or that they have approached. So right. I I definitely got you on that. So that is one thing. Even if you don't get your own personal um, YouTube or podcast or anything, just personal um, that claw talk. Yeah, I would have that kind of like okay. You know how we came across the hood table, right? You know Jada Pinkett on Facebook? She has the red table. Mm-hmm. That's where our name derived from. <laughs> That's where our name derived from. I thought that was a really cool idea. And we, me and Karma Diva, we both from the hood. And a lot mm-hmm. of times, a lot of the t- topics or subjects we talk about is like real subjects that people, real people deal with, you know, pertaining to our hood or any other hood. So I was like... That would be a cool idea, a cool suggestion. I was like, okay, Jada, we coming. <laughs> yeah. We coming, Jada. But I think that would be really cool. Claw Talk on YouTube, IG, Twitter. I, hey, I just, I'm all about social media, and I'm all about yeah, promoting. We'll talk about it after we log on. We'll talk about it after we log on. Call me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look, she's going to come after you because I wasn't even, I wasn't trying to be on camera. I uh-huh. was not. And she kept coming. And it was finally like, okay. Right. Okay, I'll do it with you. I know, I know talent. I know talent when I see it. And I know awesome personalities when I see it. And social media, when it comes to promoting and platforms, is all about your personality. That That's it. I love both of you ladies' personality. So anyway, oh. that's all. That's all. <laughs> 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 
But anyway, that's all the questions I had. That's all the questions Karma Diva had. And anybody, if y'all want to reach out to Carnesia Chantel, what's the best way to reach out to you? Do you have an email that you could um, give out or? Yeah, uh, my email is kchantelofficial at gmail.com. Okay. Yes. All right. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Make sure y'all follow her on Facebook and ig and she just gave out her email address and don't forget the links are in the chat the text link is in the chat and also the uh internet link is in the chat for anybody who wants to donate to carnesia on her road to going from miss wheelchair alabama 2020 2020 to miss wheelchair america we moving on up we should yeah. be business, honey that yeah. crown is already yours Keep making us proud. Keep making us proud. <laughs> I just want to say, I'm, so, I'm, I'm glad that I had the chance to meet you and to talk with you and to get a better understanding of not only spina bifida, um, but other things and to find out how you have journeyed on and soldiered on despite, mm-hmm. um, you know, being disabled. And, you know, I appreciate the strives and the efforts that you're making. And I'm hoping that somebody else can see you and be inspired to do, to greatness, to do just do what you're doing and even more. Right. So we appreciate you coming on. We thank you for being honest with your answers. And, honey, like I said, fix your crown, baby. Don't worry about it. Queen, you got this. Rock that crown. <laughs> Rock that crown. <laughs> if, it was, if it was me, I'd be wearing the crown and where I go to McDonald's with that crown on. <laughs> me and Walmart looking for Tisha wearing that crown. <laughs> now, where the water at? Why y'all all out of water? Don't you see a queen in here? I'm thirsty. Shit. <laughs> And on that note, y'all, thanks everybody for tuning in tonight. Thank you, Carnesia, for blessing us with your presence for our interview tonight with you. Thank you to my co-host, Karma Diva. You know I love you too. And everybody who tuned in, give us a thumbs up. Hit that like button. Hit that share button so we can promote Carnesia's road to Miss Wheelchair America. And also, don't forget to donate. The links is in the chat. Donate to Carnesia. She appreciates anything. No amount is too small. No amount right, is too small. Right, right. And everybody. Don't, don't and the big time, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I would say don't forget to hit the notification bell so we can do what? Ring my bell. Ring my bell. Ring a ling a ling a ling. All right. (laughs) In the meantime, in between time, stay safe, be blessed, stay healthy, and we out. (laughs) Do this. Have a good night, ladies. You You too. too. All right.